Our universe is filled with a lot of different mysterious objects and a lot of different mysterious planets. But some objects we've discovered in the last few decades are more mysterious than others. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about one such object we haven't discussed in quite a while. A strange and unusual object known as the Mamajax object, named after its original discoverer, the object that's located about 434 light years away from planet Earth. But it's not this right here. It's actually, well it's actually around this star. So back in 2007, the scientists looking at this unusual star, or actually somewhat usual star known as V1400 Centauri, or more commonly known as G1407, discovered these unusual dips in brightness that really were difficult to explain. This is actually something that lasted for approximately 56 days. But unlike other stars that have experienced unusual dips in brightness, such as the famous Tabis star, and whose explanations involved the megastructures around the star, it didn't really take the scientists very long to figure out exactly what they were looking at here. By modeling the dips and trying to figure out exactly what they were showing us, the scientists behind the study realized that they were looking at enormous rings. And so it turns out that the Mamajax object was some sort of a giant ring planet, very likely the biggest rings in the universe, or at least in our galaxy, okay, or at least the biggest rings discovered so far. And how big is big? Well, the calculations back then established this to be approximately 0.6 astronomical units, or about 90 million kilometers, or about just over half the distance of Earth to the Sun. So really, really big. But this of course also naturally produced a lot of different problems, such as, okay, how can such a ring system even exist? And more importantly, how can it actually stay stable? Well, the modeling paper did actually explain that it's possible for these rings to exist if they were to spin in retrograde motion, or in other words, if they were actually moving in the other direction from how the planet was orbiting around the star. And also back then, the scientists, by using SWASP that you see right here, also known as Super Wasp, were able to work out the overall properties of the star and of course the planet itself. And so the star was worked out to be relatively similar to our own sun, maybe a little bit less massive, and the planet was believed to be about 13 to maybe 26 masses of Jupiter, with a somewhat eccentric orbit between about 3.5 to maybe 13.8 years around the star, with the total mass of the rings representing something equivalent to planet Earth. And because this object also contained visible gaps in the ring system, this also implied that there were probably moons around this object. So this was officially one of the first discoveries of so-called exomoons, even though the actual moons have not been seen, and the presence of the gaps in the ring system indicated that it was probably produced by moons. And more specifically, this large gap visible right here represented a possible moon of about 0.8 masses of planet Earth. At least that's what the initial analysis indicated. Moreover, the analysis from 2015 also established that the rings can even grow larger or at least replenish themselves by tidally disrupting various comets that could actually get captured by this planet. And so this paper from 2015 definitively explained how such an object, Mamajax object, could actually exist and how it could potentially exist for millions of years. But the thing is, the star itself and also this object by extension were only believed to be about 16 million years old. In other words, this is a relatively young star system. Moreover, a few other problems started to sort of appear over time. First of all, as I mentioned, it was expected that the single period here, single orbit, would take anywhere from 3.5 to maybe 14 years. But since its original orbital period was predicted to be anywhere from maybe 3.5 years, to possibly 14 years, a lot of scientists expected that this object is going to reappear sometime in 2020 and maybe 2021. But nothing was seen last year, and nothing has been seen this year either. And for many years now, I've been kind of trying to find new papers or try to find new analysis just to see what the scientists discovered in regards to this unusual object. Well, a completely new paper just came out not so long ago, along with some of the other papers from the last few years. And here's what we know so far and what was discovered in these recent papers. First of all, one of the previous papers from 2018 decided to go through some of the older data as far back as 1890, so basically over 100 years ago, 130 to be exact. They looked at various old plates of the same star and tried to find as much possible data about the star as possible. And here they were only looking for one single thing. They were trying to discover any other dips, any possible dips, 
that could have happened in the past as well, while also combining this with some of the recent observations between 2012 and 2018. Well, nothing was discovered. Nothing was ever causing the star to lose its brightness. Then this other paper decided to do something a little bit different. They decided to take a direct look at this particular location by looking at all of this in other frequencies of light, specifically millimeter and submillimeter light that is visible using the beautiful ALMA telescope you see right here. But nothing was directly visible in the location where they expected this planet to be, or whatever this object was. They did, however, detect something a little bit farther away in a very different location. There was a tiny point, infrared point, visible slightly farther away from the star itself, with the observations being consistent of something that was actually not a planet, but instead was a detached object. An object that might have passed in front of a star and was now moving farther and farther away. And more specifically, these observations indicated that this was some sort of a thin ring of dust, with dust particles being around 1 millimeter in size, which was also indicative of some sort of a young ring system but not necessarily this particular planet. And so definitely more studies were needed to try to discover what's going on here. And so now we have this last paper that was just recently released that went on a very, very thorough analysis and a lot of different investigations, this time really focusing on the star itself. Mostly because the scientists wanted to figure out what kind of a star this was to begin with, and also if there were any other planets around it. And so first of all, we already knew that this is a variable star. It does change its brightness quite a lot, quite dramatically, and quite frequently. But none of the observations in the last 19 years revealed any other dips in brightness or any other planetary objects passing in front of it. They also discovered that the star has a lot of different star spots on the surface, which can definitely affect the luminosity of the star. But in this case, the star spots alone would not be able to explain these unusual dips in brightness that lasted for 56 days in 2007. The star is also quite magnetic, has a lot of different emissions, and has a 5-point year magnetic cycle that does change its activity. But none of the dips in brightness so far indicated that anything else was orbiting here or showed any other dips from the mysterious Mamajux object. And so, by combining the results from these studies, we can maybe start making some conclusions. And so first of all, it looks like nothing massive or nothing really large is really orbiting this particular star, at least not from the perspective where we can easily see it. It looks like in the last 130 years or so, there was only one major dip, and this dip was from this unusual object that passed in front of a star. But it also looks like this was a single event, it only happened once. And it's actually extremely rare for any of this to happen completely by chance. And it looks like this one dip that happened in 2007 might have been from this mysterious brown dwarf or some sort of a really, really massive planet with extremely large rings that very likely just passed in front of the star. And so here this would be what we would refer to as the detached object. A planetary object that passed in front of a star caused all of these dips and is now essentially flying through the rest of the galaxy on its own merry way. Something that was further detected in the infrared observations from ALMA with the object itself moving at around 35 kilometers per second and very likely simply just passing in front of a star. But we've always believed that these events would be extremely rare and moreover, this object would be extremely unusual. If this is just a brown dwarf or some sort of a rogue planet with a really large ring formation, this would be quite an extremely rare discovery. So rare as a matter of fact that it sort of defies the odds. But for now, this does seem to be the best explanation. It seems to have been some sort of an unusual brown dwarf-like or planetary object with extremely large rings around it, which technically makes it its own star system. And in this case, a lot of these ring gaps we've detected could have actually been technically planets around it. At least that's what it seems like so far. Nobody really knows truly what this object is and we're not going to know until we see it again. And because the original predictions of the maximal orbit of this object predicted its reappearance sometime in 2020 or maybe 2021, and also because we haven't really seen anything since, especially in the last year or so, the only other reasonable explanation here would be, well, that it's a detached object, and we just got extremely lucky to see it pass in front of another star, with the object itself thus becoming even more interesting than the original discovery. At least scientifically speaking, it would mean that this is probably some sort of a baby star system, baby rook planet system, or possibly an entirely new type of an object to begin with, something we haven't seen before and something we might not see for a while as well. 
But unfortunately for now, that's really all we know about this mysterious object, and this is all we've learned in the last uh, 14 years or so. It looks like we might never actually see this object dip the same star again. But I guess for now that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't. Once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video, so make sure to subscribe if you'd like to learn more. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful prison t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.